A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster. I'll Silver. Boy. There was death in the air. It was in the circling sweep of a single buzzard that hovered high in the blue. It was in the throbbing heat of a glassy sun that beat down upon Painted Basin. But most of all, it was in the eyes of Sheriff Jim Barrett. Uh. There. Does that feel better? Uh, thanks. Hello. Uh, Here. Uh, Here, this handkerchief in the strips. I'll bandage your shoulder. Uh, I, I appreciate your help, stranger. It won't do any good. Got more slugs in my chest <coughs> than my shoulder. At least I'll do all I can. Gather some wood, Dan. Build a fire. We'll need hot water. Sure, right away. I won't live long enough to see that water boil. You'll pull through. Lift up now. I've got oh. that shirt away and fix it. Oh. Who are you? Another outlaw? No, I'm not an outlaw. Neither are my friends. Uh, guess that's right. You couldn't be an owl hoot and be helping me. You're a sheriff, aren't you? The star on your vest. Barrett's my name. Jim Barrett. I've heard of you. Been sheriff of Calhoun County for the last ten years. Figured on serving another ten. If the folks wanted me to. But Santos changed all that with a bullet. You mean Buck Santos, the outlaw? Is that who shot you? He and his gang sneaking, murdering, cattle rustling. When did it happen? About 30 minutes ago. Trailed him up here to the basin. Then they split up and a couple of them dry gulched me. Even Buck Santos can't get away with murder. Oh, yes, he can. You see, stranger, even if I was going to stick around, which I'm not... I couldn't prove that it was Buck and his hombres who nailed me. Why not? They were all wearing masks, just like you. I see. But I think I could have proved a case against them in court. Proved who the real boss is behind the Santos gang with all the robbing and cattle stealing. You can still prove it. Uh, not from where I'm going. Your deputies, they can take the evidence. There's only one deputy. George, my son. He, well, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'm afraid George... Of course he will. Folks don't understand, George. It's not like me. What's the evidence you have against Santos and whoever it is who controls him? Uh, nothing, really, except a confession from one of Buck's gunslingers. Now her name's Slim Lennon. Slim name names. And if I could have got he and Buck in court... Did he write and sign the confession? No. Oh, that's a trouble. I, I 
had him in jail, but Buck and the gang broke him out. That's when I trailed him up here. You said this Slim Leonard mentioned names. Who? There's only one that's important. That'll be hard to prove. Who is it? Oh. oh it's getting kind of chilly, ain't it? It's funny. The sun was shining real bright a few minutes ago. Hang on, Jim. Oh. George. I'm kind of worried about him. He'll be all alone. I'm sure you won't have to worry about George, Sheriff. I promise you that. You promise? I promise. I don't know why, stranger, but this is the first and I guess the last time in my life I ever believed a man who was wearing a mask. Oh. The water's ready. It's boiling. Never mind, Dan. We won't need it now. Lawman dead? Yes, Tonto. He's dead. Oh, gee. There's no way of finding who killed him. Yes, there is. We trail out, Law? No, Tonto. First, we'll take Jim's body home, back to the town of Cahoon. Then I have a promise to keep. I, uh, I want to see George, old Jim's son. It was late that night when George Barrett walked into the Silver Queen Cafe. In general appearance, George looked exactly like his father. He had the same square shoulders and gray eyes, but there the resemblance ended. He pushed his way through the crowd and edged up to the bar. Evening, George. Evening. What are you drinking? Uh, nothing. Nothing right now. Yeah, I heard about your pa getting killed. Tough luck, kid. I was sure sorry to hear it. So was I. Uh, how did it happen? I don't know exactly. He was ambushed this afternoon out by Painted Basin. Yeah? How'd you hear about it? Oh, an Indian and a young boy brought his body home. They found him out there. Yeah, it's too bad. Too bad. And if you ask me, it's the worst luck the town of Cahoon ever had. Buck Santos and his crew will go hog wild now. Maybe they won't. I see you're wearing your paw's star. You the new sheriff? I, I guess I'll have to be until election time comes up again. It's no job for you, George, and you know it. Maybe not. But Dad left a message with this Indian who found him and... The least thing I can do is try to carry out his wishes. You're sitting on a keg of blasting powder. Here it comes right now. Oh, what do you mean? Buck Santos. He just spotted you. He's coming over. <laughs> well, well, if it isn't Georgie Barrett. Uh, you're up kind of late, ain't you? Little boys ought to be in bed. Uh, I came in here to see you, Santos. Oh, that's so? What do you want to do, invite me to a tea party? <laughs> My father was murdered this afternoon. Shot from ambush. Yeah. That's too bad. It leaves Cahoon without a sheriff. No, it doesn't. As Dad's only deputy, I'm taking his place. You? That's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> you killed him. Dad sent me that message, so I know it's true. What's that? I said you killed him. And you're under arrest for murder. Arrest? Did you hear that, boys? He's arresting me! <laughs> Hand over your guns. Now listen, you young whelp. Nobody arrests me. You're packing a gun. You'd better go for it. Because I'm shooting that tin store off your vest and making you dance while I do it. Draw, George, draw. I, Cahoon's I have... a pretty good-sized town, but it's too small to hold you and me. Now dance. Oh, no, wait. Wait, you can't do that to me. The sheriff can't handle a gun, but he sure does a fancy toe dance. <laughs> you heard what I said, Barrett? I'm making a bunch quitter out of you. Now get out of my sight. Put your yellow tail between your legs and get out of town. Uh, well, I... I now didn't... get! Step up to the bar, boys. The drinks are on me. Hey, <laughs> In a small grove of cottonwoods at the edge of town, the Lone Ranger waited impatiently for Tonto and Dan. Oh, oh, scout, open it. Oh, open it. What did you find out? He went to Silver Queen Cafe. We followed him. Uh, cafe, plenty crowded. We see Buck Santos there. Santos? Uh. Yeah. He bluffed George, shot bullets into the floor, and made him dance. Uh, 
Lawman get scared, leave cafe. Left? Which way did he go? He headed for home. Here, Silver. You and Tonto wait here, Dan. I'll be right back, city big fella. <coughs> but can't we go with you? No, Dan. I want to reach his house before he does. I can ride faster alone. Come on, Silver. <laughs> Mast, who are you? I did all I could to help your father, George. And I promised him I'd help you. Hey, you were the outlaw who no, killed him. No, I didn't kill him. I think it was Buck Santos who did that. Your father thought so, too. The Indian and the boy told me that when they brought him home. Yes, I know. What are you going to do now, George? Well, who are you to... Well, it doesn't make any difference anyway. Because I'm leaving town. When? Just as soon as I can get my clothes back. You're the sheriff of Cahoon. Who'll take your place if you leave? I don't care. George, your father was killed this afternoon. Killed in the line of duty. He died defending the law. That's right. He was murdered just because he was unlucky enough to be sheriff. He was proud of it. I knew it had happened sometime. It's the only law this country knows. Kill or get killed. I'm sick of it. So you're going to let a cheap tin horn outlaw like Buck Santos run you out of town? How'd you know? Tell me something, George. When Santos bluffed you in the Silver Queen tonight, why didn't you use your gun? Well, I... You I, must know how. You couldn't be Jim Barrett's son and not be able to shoot. Oh, I can shoot all right, but... Well, I guess I might as well tell you, too. Everybody else knows it now. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Being killed? No, it's not that, really, it isn't. It's... It's just that whenever there's any gunplay, my hands start to shake and I want to run and hide. I've always been that way, ever since I was a kid. I guess I'm just a natural-born coward, afraid of something I can't describe. No, George, you're not a coward. And I think I know what it is you're afraid of. What? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, that doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. There's no fear as great as the fear of the unknown, something you can't name. You're right. I can't name it. But that doesn't stop me from being so scared. I... Wait a minute. Someone just rode up. Barrett! George Barrett! It's Buck Santos and that crew that rides with him. I told you to get out of town, Barrett. I'm here to see that you get. Come on out. There's ten or twelve of them out there. They'll start shooting George, the level. George, Turn down the lamp. The moonlight outside will be to our advantage. Better come out, George. See? Before you riddle that shack with lead. If they shoot, I won't have a All chance. All right, I'll turn down the lamp. Help any virus. If you're too scared to come out, we'll come in and carry out. <laughs> What'll I do? I want you to do and say exactly what I tell you, George. Open the door and tell them to come and get you. But they're outlaws. We're outnumbered. I'll take care of that. Open the door. I'm staying here, Sanders. Nobody can make me leave my own house. Listen to the little badge toters. Did it hit you? No, but I can't go. Over here by me. Come on, boys. We'll give that yellow-livered lowman a lesson he won't forget. Watch out, Buck. He's holed up there in the dark. Now fan out and start riddling the place. He'll never come out alive. No, there's no way we can get out of here. Good floor. I'll do the shooting. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Buck Santos and his gang poured round after round of gunfire into the house of George Barrett. Buck Santos approached the door. The outlaw leader was moving slowly with a blazing six-gun clutched in each hand. We haven't got a chance. We'll... Listen, George. We're in the dark. They don't know there's anyone here but you. Oh, what difference does that make? I want you to do and say exactly what I tell you. Understand? 
I'll do it. Good. Now, as soon as Santos comes a little closer, we'll Come try... Come out of there, pirate! You're still able to watch. Tell him to drop his guns. Drop your guns, Santos. Boy, you little... Oh! Why, you... You knocked my shooting irons right out of my hands. Make him tell his men to stop firing. Tell your men to stop firing, Buck. You're covered. I, I... Hold your fire, boys. Hold it. I'm going to let you go. I'll take your men and leave. Trying to save your own hide, huh? All right, you've got the drop on me. I'll go. But remember this. The next time I see you, it's going to be different. Yeah? Uh, I'm going to arrest you for cattle rustling, robbery, and all the other crimes you've committed. Including the murder of my father. You can't prove a thing on me, and you know it. Slim Leonard confessed before he broke jail. He even told the name of the man you take orders from. That's a lie. Move along, Sanders. And remember what I said. You can't prove a thing. All right, boys, mount up and follow me. Get him. George, George, are you all right? Oh, and I heard the shooting and saw them right away. Oh, that was Buck Santos, wasn't it? Yes. Then, then you outshot him. Well, you must have. Oh, George. No, I didn't outshoot Buck Sanders. I was too scared to draw my gun. Someone else did it. Who? A tall man wearing a black mask. He did the shooting and he told me what to say. I was just like I always am. I was afraid. Well, who is he? What's his name? I don't know, Ann. The worst part of it is he coached me to tell Buck Sandos I'd arrest him on sight. He's gone. Now what'll I do? <laughs> All right. We hear shots. Was it a gunfight? Steady, big fella. <laughs> Not much of a fight, Dan. Buck Santos and his gang tried to put some lead back of their threat to run George Barrett out of town. And did George call their bluff? Yes, in a way he did. Tonto, uh -huh. I want you to ride to the county seat. There's a United States Marshal's office there. Bring a deputy back here with you. Mm, that plenty long ride. I know it. Start now and get back as soon as you can. Uh -huh. Here's Scout. What time to tell the deputy? Tell him about Jim Barrett being killed. That his son, George, wants to present proof identifying the men responsible for the murder. Up uh, they go. Get him up, scout. Does, does George really know who killed his father? Not definitely, Dan. He still has to prove it. We all know it was Buck Santos. George is the sheriff now. Why doesn't he just arrest Buck? There are two reasons why that can't be done, Dan. First, there can be no legal conviction without proof. Second... George Barrett can't arrest Santos because he's afraid. Yeah, I know. I saw him in a cafe tonight. It's hard to figure out. He doesn't look like a man who'd be afraid. George isn't a coward in the ordinary sense of the word. There's more to it than that. What do you mean? He's afraid of fear, something he can't name, the unknown. You mean like being scared of the dark when you don't know what you're afraid of? Yes, that's it. Fear of the unknown. It's a powerful force, unless you can overcome it. Yeah, but what can George do? Quite a bit if we help him. How? Oh. And we'll use the same force to trap Buck Santos. I don't understand. Now we'll sleep now, Dan, because Tonto won't be back until tomorrow afternoon. But the first thing in the morning, I want you to take a sealed envelope to the bank in Cahoon. The bank? Yes. George Barrett goes with a girl who works in the bank. I want you to give her the envelope and also deliver a message. <laughs> you, Ann? Uh, Miss Ann Russell? Yes. Oh, you don't know me. My Indian friend and I were the ones who found Sheriff Barrett yesterday, out by Painted Basin. Oh, yes. George told me. I've got an envelope here that, well, I haven't opened it because it's none of my business. But I figured it might be Slim Leonard's confession, all signed and sealed. What? Why, that would prove that... I'll put it in the safe and tell George about it when I see him tonight. Yes, ma'am. Well, what's this? A new customer? Oh, Mr. Childress, I didn't see you. Uh, this is the boy who found Sheriff Barrett yesterday out by Painted Basin. Well, is that so? This is Mr. Childress, the man who owns the bank. Well, I'm glad to know you, sir. So you're the boy who found Sheriff Barrett. Well, that's very interesting. He's just brought even better news. This envelope contains the confession of Slim Leonard, one of Santos' gang. A confession? Are you sure? The sheriff told this boy about it just before he died. They'll put it in the safe. The sooner some of these cooks around this county are brought to justice, the better. 
Oh, by the way, Mr. Childress, the payroll for the Western Cattle Company came in by express a few minutes ago. I'll put it in the safe, too. Of course. <clears throat> I'm uh, going out for an early lunch, Miss Russell. I'll, uh, 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 where's that boy who brought you the envelope? Why, I don't know. Well, he was standing there just by the door a moment ago. Well, that's strange that he should disappear. Oh, well, I'll see you after lunch. Hello, Red. Where's Slim? In the back room. What's the matter, Buck? Plenty. Come on. Slim, what's this I hear about a confession that you made and signed before we beefed old man Barrett? I never signed any confession. The old coot asked me some questions. You're lying. Everything you blabbed and signed is on a piece of paper in the safe over at the bank. Oh, it can't be. I didn't sign Red any... Red and I are going to get that piece of paper tonight. Along with the payroll for the Western Cattle Company. We're cracking the bank as soon as it gets dark. Why, sure, Buck. We can crack... But the... you won't be with us, you sneaking lobo. What I'm going to do now is a boss's orders. And I agree with him. No, Buck, please don't you shoot. Double don't cross you, and coyote. Don't, don't shoot. Come in. Why, the mess, man. Where have you been all this time? Kept my eye on your house all day, George. You uh, haven't been out. Uh, no, there was nothing I could do. Well, now there is I... something you can do. Come on. Well, where are you going? I've been waiting here for Ann. It, it's dark now. She'll be through work at the bank pretty it's soon. It's because and of Ann that I'm asking you to come with me. Where? We'll wait in the doorway of that livery stable right across the street from the bank. Yeah, but why are we I'll going... I'll explain it later. Come on, and don't forget your guns. This is an ideal place to watch. I can see without being seen. But I don't understand. Look through the window of the bank. You can see Ann, can't you? There's only one lamp burning... And she's working at a ledger on the high desk. Of course I see her. She often works late like this. But I... I don't think she's ever worked when the safe that's behind her contained what it does tonight. What? There's a lot of money in the safe. That isn't as important as a white envelope that's in there with it. Now, what kind of an envelope? It was delivered to Anne this morning by a friend of mine. She's sure it contains Slim Leonard's written confession, the one he made to your father. And he did confess. Why, with that evidence, I can... Put the Santos gang in prison for life. How did you get it? Wait a minute. Buck Santos knows about that envelope, too. He's afraid somebody will see what's in it. You try to hold up the bank. That's why I suggested we come down here. I may be wrong, but I think that... Look. There he is now. He and Red and one of his gunslingers. We're just in time. Oh, if only I wasn't afraid of gunfire. You're not afraid, George. For the first time in your life, you haven't got time for fear. Yeah, but I don't... The life of the girl you love is in danger. She's depending on you. You won't let her down because the thing you thought you were afraid of is just a couple of cheap outlaws. They're deathly afraid of the law. Afraid of you. Come in, guys. Come on up. Are you going to let them get away with it? Not in a thousand years. I'm going to arrest two outlaws. Put up your hands, Santos. You're under arrest. Yes, sir. Why are you... You asked for it, both of you. <laughs> Drop that other gun, Santos, or I'll drill you. No, no, don't shoot. I give up. Thank you. What well, Hamilton well, Young Barracks? Hey, that boy really handles a shooting iron. Uh, hey, what's this? What's going on here? Oh, hello, Mr. Childress. I, I just nailed a couple of owl hoots who were going to hold up your bank. Good, good work. George, George, darling. Oh, Ann. Are you hurt? <laughs> They'd take a straighter brand of shooting than those hombres used to hurt me. Oh, George, I have something for you. An envelope that was given me this oh, morning by you. Well, who's this? Oh, 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 oh. Well, that woman Barrett over there. Uh, well, Sheriff, you seem to have everything pretty well in hand. I have two crooks and the evidence to convict him. Good. Uh, uh, excuse me, I'm going into the bank. No, you're not, Shoulder. Stop him. Uh, 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 Red and I aren't going to take all the blame. He wants to get away so we can get that paper in the bank. Slim's confession. It's got his name on it, too. Childress is the boss. I've been taking orders from him for over two years. So that's it. Stand where you are, Childress. Hey, this is ridiculous. Get Slim's confession. That'll prove it. You can't do this, Sheriff. Well, Sheriff, he's got a gun. <coughs> he hasn't got it now. And he's the one who had me plug Slim Leonard. Yeah, yeah, Seems to me, Sheriff, you've heard enough to convict all three of these men. 
I'll lock them up. All right, get moving, all of you. Come on. You've done a good job, George. Your father'd be proud of you, just as proud as I am. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't do anything, Ann. I, but let's get that envelope. Slim Leonard's confession. I have it right here. I didn't put it in the safe. I carried it with me all day. Here. Oh, with this confession, I can... <laughs> Why, it's blank. There's nothing written on this paper. And all the time, I oh, thought... it doesn't that... make any difference. They've all admitted what they did. Oh, yes, but it's I... Sheriff. Why, hello there, son. Uh, a friend of yours asked me to give you a message. What is it? Yeah. Hey, uh... Easy, boy. Come on, Tyler. Uh, get him up. Get up there, boy. Oh, what's it say, George? Read it. Uh, well, it's just one line. It says, Fear of the unknown works better with the law than against it. I don't understand it. I do. It means that Buck Santos, Childress, and all of that gang were afraid of a blank piece of paper. But who is it from? Who sent it to you? It's signed, The Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.